Well, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our first Sunday matinee of 2023 Heifetz Institute Festival of Concerts. I'm Benjamin Rowe, the president and CEO of the Heifetz International Music Institute, and my compadre, uh, Nicholas Kitchen, is not with me today because uh, he is down in Lynchburg doing our first concert ever with the uh, Forte Chamber Music Series that is at the Meyer Museum of Art in Lynchburg. So, uh, two concerts for Heifetz today in the Commonwealth. But right here in Stanton, now that you've all come in out of the rain, uh, you're not going to hear the jazz go down. You're going to hear a bit of a cellobration uh, in this first half. Uh, some wonderful uh, performances, one from a brand new student who's here and one from a, a terrific returning student. So lots to look forward to today. I do want to share with you uh, that last night was our first hoot nanny and um, we caught a break because we had fantastic weather for it, but something happened at the Hootenanny last night that has never happened before in the nine years that we've been doing Heifetz Hootenannies. And what that was, was that you could actually pull out your phone and not only watch the live stream, but this is the important part, you could actually see the program. You could actually see what they were performing because we actually had the pr program listed on our new digital program. So if you haven't taken the time yet to go download the Heifetz app, there's this whole world that awaits you. Um, all you need to do is free, uh, both on the Google Play and the Apple Store, and you can actually follow along, which is kind of amazing. So I hope you enjoy the program today. I'll be back at intermission to share with you some previews of what's ahead next week. And thank you all for coming and please enjoy the program. My name is Gabby. I am a Colombian American from Miami, Florida. This is my first year at the Heifetz Institute, and though we just finished the first week, it still feels like a fever dream to be here. T today, I will be performing the prelude to the third cello suite by Johann Sebastian Bach. Bach has been a true hero for me at certain points in my life. In my early childhood years, my parents went through a really rough divorce, and it was a lot for me emotionally, and somehow me and Bach landed together, and we had a lot of listening sessions, and he gave me a sense of home, a sense of safety in times of despair and a lot of crying sessions. So, Today, while I perform this prelude, I hope that you find a sense of home yourself. Thank you. Thank you. 
I'm Sophie Leung. I'm 16 years old and I'm from Hong Kong. Today I'll be playing the FAE Sonata, The Skirt Soul by Brahms with my amazing pianist Jessica. Um, you may be wondering why is this called FAE Sonata? Because FAE in German words means free but alone. The story behind uh, this piece is really interesting. So Brahms and Schumann and Schumann's student composed this together and um, they're gonna dedicate to Joseph Joachim and Brahms and Schumann's student composed each movement and Schumann composed the other two. And the challenge is to let Joseph determine who composed each movement. Yeah, <laughs> and he played the work with Schumann and he identified who composed each movement so easily. Uh, the scherzo uh, that I'm gonna play today uh, is, was by Brahms and uh, it's the most famous and most played. It has a really fast rhythmic drive and is very powerful. I hope you can feel the fire in this piece. Thank you.
Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Mira Cardan, and I'm from Los Angeles, California. This is my fourth time at the Heifetz Institute, and I'm so excited to be back. I first came here when I was 10 years old, so now this place feels like my home away from home. This afternoon, the wonderful Yun Lee and I will be performing the fourth movement from Cello Sonata No. 2 by Johannes Brahms. Though there's not too much information on Brahms's life at the time he wrote this sonata, in my eyes, I see the complete four movements as a love letter. I'm a huge romantic, and my favorite love story from music history is the one between Brahms and Clara Schumann. Brahms was famously in love with Clara, who was, unfortunately, the wife of his best friend. <laughs> the two would write hundreds of letters to each other, and while I was doing some research on the background of this sonata, I was sucked into a rabbit hole, and I read dozens of their letters. They were just so beautifully composed and poetic. One line that really stuck out to me was in a letter Brahms wrote to Clara. He said, I wish I could write to you as tenderly as I love you and tell you all the good things that I wish you. I think Brahms wrote of his love for Clara through this sonata. The fourth and final movement that we will be playing for you is full of love. Not just the beautiful and joyous elements, but also the turbulent and explosive emotions that come with love. I cannot wait to rewrite this love letter in my own words. Thank you.
Hello, everyone. I'm Kareem. I'm from Herndon, Virginia, and this is my first time at the Heifetz Institute. Uh, today, Allison Freeman and I will be playing the first movement from Sinfonia Concertante by Prokofiev. This piece was written for Rostropovich, and for those of you who don't know who Rostropovich is, he was one of the most influential cellists of his time. He uh, worked very hard to uh, expand the cello repertoire, and us cellists nowadays have so much to thank him for because we have so many great 20th century works that we can play and perform. Um, if you're going to write a piece for Rostropovich, it's going to be hard. And this, box, this piece definitely checks that box. Um, it's often said that Rostropovich would even go on stage without practicing or warming up beforehand. Now, I hate to break it to you, but I did practice, <laughs> and I'm not Rostropovich. But I know you'll enjoy. Thank you.
Good afternoon. My name is Noelle Naito. I'm 21 years old and I'm from Elkhurst, Maryland. This is my fourth summer here at the Heifetz Institute. I'm so happy to see so many familiar faces here. <laughs> Today, my wonderful pianist, Balin and I will be performing for you Introduction and Rondo Capriccioso by Camille Sansons. Since I just turned 21 last week, not only <laughs> <laughs> um, not only I think this piece um, brings my inner child of the innocence and the playful characteristics it has, I think it also shows my maturity side and that there's so many colors and emotions, and I think that really reflects um, the ups and downs I've been through throughout my 21 years of my life. <laughs> Um, I'm just so excited to be performing for you guys, and I hope you enjoy. Thank you.
And I wanted to mention that here because I don't talk about this a lot during the season, but um, the students that you all heard play, most of them have been here at the Institute, but not all of them. The two, the two that are not, Karim and Gabriella, in addition to being very fine players, uh, they're also here as working, doing double duty as resident associates, basically the dorm counselors. Um, and all of the students in our first half uh, receive significant scholarship to attend here. And I know that a lot of you in the room that I see have been people who have uh, made scholarship contributions to the Institute. And this is why. And I want you to remember that. Um, next time I come around <laughs> and ask you to open your checkbook, this is the reason why. Uh, these extraordinary young players, uh, and you think about it, where they come from, you know, where they're coming from Herndon, Virginia, or coming from Seoul, or Taipei, or Hong Kong, or Singapore, they're coming to Stanton, Virginia, to learn and to perfect their art, and we all get to witness it. So it's really something rather extraordinary. So I just want to, uh, for this little intermission talk, uh, yes, we do have a number of concerts coming up, and they, we have a talent level this year, which is really not to be believed. Tomorrow we'll be back here for our second Stars of Tomorrow of the season. We'll also have one on Wednesday here, and on Thursday will be the first of our Thursday night chamber music series. And this is something we're very excited about. Nicholas Kitchen and I have talked for years about the potential of having our outstanding students joining together to play chamber music with our outstanding faculty. And we're going to make it happen this year by gum. So uh, there will be some great performances, including because he doesn't have enough to do, besides being our artistic director, running the Borromeo Quartet, uh, having his own teaching studio here. He's also an arranger on the side. Uh, so you're going to hear a version of The Swan by Saint-Saëns, which, believe it or not, I don't think we've ever actually played in the Stars of Tomorrow while, since I've been here. But we have a special arrangement for three cellos uh, that you're going to hear uh, on our Thursday night program. And that's just the beginning. So for the rest of it, you're just going to have to come and see it. Um, we will have our Friday, our first Fridays in the Gallery concert on Friday afternoon, and that is going to be at the Stanton Augusta Art Center. That's always a free concert, uh, but we do ask that you make a reservation in advance because they tend to fill up very quickly. And we'll be back here um, on Friday night with our second Celebrity Series concert, which is going from solo to octet. We have a great composer here in Virginia named Joel Hoffman, a uh, very musical family, and uh, we have a new piece uh, for solo viola that will be premiered along, that will help be the, how the concert begins, and it will end with the great Mendelssohn Octet. So that will be a really wonderful program. And then on Saturday, two performances by our junior division. And for those of you that might have caught it, our junior division concert yesterday was another spectacular um, outing at the new South Market stage. Next week, next Saturday, we'll have a chamber music concert at 11 a.m., and then at 2 p.m., we'll have another solo showcase, and of course, the Hyphus Hoot Nanny on Saturday night. So lots to look forward to. We've already had, this is concert number seven, and it's week one. So there's many great things to look forward to, and I thank you all again for being here and for your support. My name is Samuel Garcia, and I am from Monroe, Louisiana, and Crossed, Arkansas. Today, Miss Baylin and I will be performing Dance of the Goblins by Antonio Pizzini. My first exposure to this piece was during a live performance when I was around 12 years old. Being 12, I was completely mesmerized by the speed and technicality of this piece. Five years later, I still am. Some composers write pieces to, about their life stories and to as a window into the emotions that they are feeling. And some pieces are just there to paint pictures and express as many emotions as possible. And to me, Dance of the Goblins is none of these things, because sometimes music is just meant to be fun, lighthearted, and exciting. Enjoy.
Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Robert Fornos, and I'm an 18-year-old violist from Miami, Florida. Today, I'm joined on stage with the great pianist, Tay Kim. And together, we will be performing for you the third movement of the Viola Concerto by William Walton. The piece was composed in 1929 for the legendary violist, Lionel Turtis, who happens to be one of the founding fathers of modern viola playing, not just because of his impeccable technique, but also due to his efforts to expand the viola literature as we know it today. I first discovered this piece when I was in the eighth grade. I was watching my friend play the second movement of this piece, and I was immediately captivated by it because it's fast, it's lively, fiery, and most important for my eighth grade self, there was a lot of opportunity to show off. <laughs> so I ordered the music when I got home, and I got right to practicing when I received it. Needless to say, I was humbled that day. So I opted to learn the slow movement, which is the first movement. And I was like, well, slow movement means easy movement because slow means easy. And I was humbled actually twice that day. <laughs> so I put the piece away without looking at the third movement. And I didn't revisit it again until my senior year of high school during a very strenuous time that my colleagues and I like to call the college audition season. And so I formally learned the first and second movements during this time. And for the sake of completion, I also learned the third movement. And at first, in my studies, I was quite confused with this movement because not only is the duration of it almost as long as the first two movements put together, musically speaking, the melodies that are presented seem to come out of nowhere. And I was wondering, where do I find this in the other parts of this concerto? And that was until I was learning the final phrase of this third movement, which is a direct echo of the main theme heard in the first movement. The only twist is that this time, the first movement's main theme is more sentimental. And whenever I play this particular ending of the third movement, I always like to envision an old man reminiscing on his life, the good and the bad. And I think the sentimentality conveys the regret in this nostalgic trip for this old man. And for the most part, this piece dies away until the very end. And whenever the last chords are played on the piano, that is my definition of the old man's last breaths. So I hope our performance will take you on the old man's journey. Thank you for being here today.
Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you. My name is Marina Alba Lopez, and I'm from Madrid, Spain, and this is my first time at the Heifetz Institute. Today, I'll be performing Faust Fantasy by Henrik Wienowski, alongside my wonderful pianist, Andrew Rosenblum. I fell in love with this piece the moment I heard it when I was 14, but it was way too hard for me to play it back then. Anyway, ever since I've actually started playing it, once Every time I play it in front of people, I've been told the piece suits me like a glove. Honestly, I don't know what that means. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> um, the piece, as the title indicates, is based on the opera Faust, composed by Charles Gounod, who also inspired the piece in the tragic play by the same name, written by the philosopher and playwright Goethe. I don't know how familiar you guys are with the tale of Faust, but it's basically um, the story about how the devil persuaded Faust to give him his soul in exchange for a potion that would make him young. All of this just so that this beautiful woman called Margarita would fall in love with him. Uh, one of the amazing things about the violin fantasy is the way it combines Goethe's poetic lyricism with Gounod's musicality. It's also incredibly mesmerizing to see how Wienowski somehow achieved to condense a four hour long opera into a short, short-ish, 18 minute violin piece. Hope you guys enjoy this roller coaster experience full of passion and virtuosity. Thank you.